I mean, cusp to me is on, on the edge of something happening. And that, that's exciting because all the great change, I think, in the world has always occurred on the edges of things. The orthodoxy or the centre of things is, is where maybe the, the power is, but not necessarily where the innovation is. And I think edge is, is extremely exciting. Health Habitat is very simple. We try and improve the living environment to improve people's health. Environment and health are fundamentally linked. Uh, in developed countries, we think of protecting the environment. In developing countries, I think there's an onus to protect the people who live in the country. But you can't split people's environment and their health. That to me is one of the great underpinning um, ideas of all the work we do. As an architect, we're trained to look at the environment. Medicos are trained to deal with health, and it's the fusion of those two which actually leads to the work of Health Habitat. Health Habitat has had over a thousand people working on projects, not just in Australia, but overseas. We, we have varied teams. We have engineers who are specialists in monitoring water. Uh, we engage them to test whether in fact showers we've developed that use less water but serve more people um, actually use less water. We look at monitoring energy to see if we can find better ways to heat hot water, better ways to cook a meal, better ways to cool a building that don't consume so much energy that poorer people living in the house simply can't afford to pay the bill, therefore they can't pay the rent and often that might mean they have no house. So most of our staff are local, indigenous, community people. They need to know they're solving real problems and they also need to know that the solutions we propose actually achieve a result. It's important in the nature of what design is. It links in a huge variety of skill and talent. real work we do, we engage local people in solving and helping us improve their own living environment. So in CUSP we're going to set people the task of solving some problems. I mean, part of the exhibition is we're going to give them health, real health issues, we're going to give them some help, but we're going to actually ask them to make decisions about how, if they were thrown out into remote Australia or into Nepal or into Brooklyn in the United States, how they'd go about solving some really key health issues. I mean, our work is always centred on um, poor people, to put it bluntly. Uh, people who don't get a fair slice of the pie, um, whether it's in Australia, a developed and wealthy country, or whether it's in extremely poor country like Nepal, one of the poorest countries on the planet. And they're the people we choose to work for. We think that's where urgent work is needed to try and give those people at least a chance of having reasonable health and particularly our target groups, kids naught to five. Most of what we are actually is form naught to five. Um, after five we're more bomb proof, we can survive poor environments better but by five years of age the damage is done and most of us don't have much control over our lives naught to five so our job is to help that group to have a chance of competing in, being part of the world, education, all of these things don't just happen, they come from having reasonable well-being. That's where our work should stay. There's more than enough designers capable of designing new DVD players, new barbecues, new whatever, uh, new cars. We'll leave that to them. Our job is to try and work on designs that link to the well-being of people. And as I say, I think without considering the environment in this package, then we're kidding ourselves. Thank you.